Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about the new dinosaur names, designs, and reveals that have come out for the Jurassic World Netflix series. So for those of you who don't know, this August, Netflix is set to debut the long-awaited Jurassic World animated series called Camp Cretaceous, which will be set during the Indominus Rex's breakout and the resulting chaos that took place in the first Jurassic World. It will take place on the opposite side of Isla Nublar and feature a wide host of new dinosaurs that weren't seen in the initial film. Now, I've actually heard a few things from people who got to see some stuff related to this show, and they say that the overall look and feel of Camp Cretaceous will actually be super lifelike and on par with what you can expect to see of the dinosaurs in the live action movies. And apparently the same thing can be said for the actual environments themselves. The only thing that's actually going to look super cartoony in the show will be the human characters from what I've heard. But I guess we'll all have to wait just a few more months to really know for sure. Now as far as all of the new dinosaurs go, we seem to know a whole lot more. Because Mattel actually went ahead and released images of the action figures made for them quite recently. So the big, bad, antagonizing dinosaur of Camp Cretaceous will apparently be a Carnotaurus that the park has named Toro. Which is actually pretty clever, seeing as Carnotaurus translates to meat-eating bull, and Toro is obviously derivative of that name. Anyways, what I find really interesting about this dinosaur is the fact that we may have actually already seen it before. So if you pay really close attention to the end of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, the Carnotaurus that is actually responsible for eating half of Eli Mills is one with a noticeable scar that's been carved across its face. And if we take a look at these images of Toro from Camp Cretaceous, you'll notice a pretty similar motif. I know for a fact that the Carnotaurus from the end of Fallen Kingdom was actually based on the demon Carno toy that Kenner made for Jurassic Park in 1994. So if this guy does manage to be the same one from Fallen Kingdom and it has a big role in Camp Cretaceous, I'll be pretty excited. But just take this theory with a little bit of a grain of salt because from my understanding, the scar is actually on the opposite side of the nose that it's supposed to be in relation to Fallen Kingdom. That being said, Jurassic isn't exactly new to retcons and continuity errors, but hey, I'm just letting you all know that the possibilities of it being the same animal and a new asset are 50-50 in my opinion. Apart from that, there are also three Baryonyx who all have somewhat of a different color palette and are all going by three separate names, those being Grim, Chaos, and Limbo. Now, I have absolutely no idea how they're going to be shown off in the show, but I'd assume that they'd all either be in the same enclosure or possibly working together as some sort of makeshift familial pack. But honestly, like I said, I have no idea. Next up is what I'm assuming will be the series mascot of the show, which is a baby ankylosaur named Bumpy. He's probably going to be played up like Ralph the Triceratops from Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park novel, given the cutesy name and the baby status. But other than that, there really isn't too much we can really say about it. Now obviously, there were a ton of other toys and dinosaurs that have been teased and revealed for Camp Cretaceous as far as the Mattel marketing goes, but these are the few that we know for a fact will be featured in the series itself. Personally, I'd really like to see if they animate their new Cryolophosaurus and Scutosaurus designs that they've been showing off recently, but until we get legitimate authentication of these other species being in the show, I don't really want to talk about them too much. As for the series itself, I guess we're going to be seeing these kids trek across Isla Nublar while the Indominus wreaks havoc around the island. Whether or not we see any substantial sort of tie-ins with the movies is anyone's guess, but if it turns out being canon, I really hope so. Now before I go, I want to thank all of my game wardens like Andrew Strub and Ian Schmidt, as well as all of my engine executives like DVM Wannabe1018 and Coda Nightwolf. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Justin Holloway, Brandon Fields, Andrew Fluker, James Rowe, and Drew Compton. It really means the world to me that you all have chosen to support the channel so much, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. See you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.